and you could continue to changing it around to various different types of visualizations. Another thing that it's really good at is displaying information about your field. So what I'm doing right now is hovering on a field over in the field list and we're seeing a tooltip. Again, this is just set up in the model and it's a description of the field. This is something really nice that Excel pivot tables don't currently deliver. So that's one of the things we can do to really help our users or consumers of the data is to give nice descriptions on how to understand it. This next sheet has a number of different bar charts and column charts on it. What I'm going to do is click on the one bar at the top left. It's, it's plants, so what we're looking at here is uh, what I call the MC Garden Center. So I have got a set of data here with uh, my, my pretend garden center that was open for business during the season of last year in 2012. So what we have here then on the right is the percentage and counts of what I sold by flower color. So we can see very quickly that when we sell plants, the most popular ones are white, purple, and orange. We can also see because of the cross filtering and the highlighting functionality that we can see that white plants are, oh, about a fourth of everything that I sold. So the fact that it highlights the related value as opposed to truly filtering it out gives us this additional contextual information. We can continue to click various bars and see different pieces of information. So for instance, here on the bottom left, I said I want to see what's shade tolerant. The most um, Plants and shrubs that are shade tolerant are white, which is not a huge surprise. So you can see that there's actually a huge amount of capabilities here when you've got numeric values that you want to slice and dice by lots and lots of different attributes. Okay, let's move to a different one. Here what I've got at the top left is a slicer. Then that's followed by a typical line chart that is over time by month. Then I've got my favorite flower color down here at the bottom left for a column chart and the ever popular pie chart that tells me what did we sell on a weekend versus not. So surprisingly, I sell more not on a weekend than a weekend. And what we can do is we can use this slicer to say, let's take a look at, for instance, just what I sold to home builders. Predominantly, they purchase white. That's very interesting. And we can see that, ah, it looks like later in the season is when I got my relationships going with, with the home builders. And I can slice on just my cash and carry folks and see what that's um, looking like as well. I can also click on the pie chart itself and everything else changes. Same thing with the orange. Ah, oh, how, how many orange items did I sell throughout the year? So everything re remains interactive. And the beauty of this tool is that you don't have to actually set it up. So if you've been a report builder or a reporting services person, you're very used to having control over all the properties and telling item A to do X, Y, Z to item B. Well, that's actually not how PowerView works. So all I did to create this was I dragged my data on and changed it to the visualization type that I want to see. And it's the underlying relationships in the data model that allow all this interactivity to occur. So for our business users, that makes it really much, much easier and less of a learning curve than some of the other tools that they might have at their disposal. So this next one, what I've got here across the top are some tiles. And I chose to tile by month. And so that's basically serving as a filter. And then along the left here, what I'm showing you are cards. So this is really just tabular type information. You would get to this under the table option up on your ribbon but it formats it in a different way that's almost like an index card from a 
from uh, the purpose of looking at it. The other thing that I have done with this is I have added a filter. So one thing about PowerView is that the filters are indeed good, but there are some things that you might be used to doing in Excel, particularly value type filters, that you might not see within this filter pane. And there's lots and lots of things that you can do, such as a rank of your top 10 products, if in fact you set it up in your data model, and then that, that data point is actually available to be filtered. So that's what I did with this one, and I'm actually filtering by my top 10 items that I sold per month. And then with a lot of the different visualization types, we can then actually sort it within the uh, visualization as well. So here I can sort it by sales units ascending, or perhaps I want to see it by my name ascending or descending as well. So we've got a few different choices there for working with the data and continuing to ask questions and change it and, and so on. So the next thing I want to show you is this is a scatter chart. And what we're looking at here across the x-axis is our sales in dollars. And then what we're looking at on the y-axis is our sales in units. So that would make sense then that our trees, we sell more dollars but less units because they're a higher unit cost. And my plants, I sell more units but overall less dollars. And then what I've done is I've set up a play axis along the bottom, and we can see that over here in the field list, that it's down here, and it's set up as month. So then what we can do is we can play this particular item over time. And the purpose for this is so that you can pause and play this particular this item and you can see either changes in relationships that happen over time or you can see patterns that emerge. And so this type of visualization is something that might actually emerge something that you don't see in a traditional line chart or other types of charts. This next item that I want to show you, I have a a set of column charts across the top, and then I have a couple of different matrix regions below it. What I'm actually going to use this column chart for is really just as a filter. So this is showing me a number of things that may I peaked as far as sales are concerned, and then I can see down below that I just made it over my budget for May and then what some of my associated expenses were. We can see very quickly that, ah, my product cost is a little out of control, so we need to take a look at that. These KPIs here that are shown, the key performance indicator icons, those are all set up in the model as well. So in terms of using them, you would see the KPIs come through in your field list looking like this. The next thing I want to show you is how